Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I'd like to take a minute to talk about Advanced Warfare on the PC because it's something that's been on my mind a lot. I've been thinking that this could be a very fun PC game. We've got very high mobility, uh, fast twitchy gameplay, overall pretty fast time to kill weapons, lots of options, equipment, that sort of thing. And these are the things that usually make for a good PC game. However, the last couple Call of Duty games have not been very fun to play on PC or in some cases barely even playable at all. And it really worries me that nobody's mentioned anything official about Advanced Warfare on the PC at all. I mean, we're, what, uh, zero minus six to seven weeks to launch. This is usually where we're getting all the final reveals, the best information, the hype is rolling, we got all the information out there. But other than the fact that it's available for PC, there's been no official PC specs available. We don't know what hardware or software, well, mostly hardware, will be needed to support the game. There's been no mention of PC features, of modes, what the DLC will be like on the PC, what the servers will be like. Pretty much no mention of PC whatsoever. There's been some people saying that's because maybe, you know, Activision has a contract with Microsoft and we pretty much only talk about the Xbox One. But, you know, it's been other consoles and stuff have been talked about. But as of right now, now, this has just been completely dead silent on the PC front, and that's something that really, really worries me, because again, the last couple of COD games have been not so ideal for PC, and the last couple of big games in general, like huge game launches, Destiny didn't have a PC. There's no Destiny on PC. Titanfall, which we all thought would be the PC game to end all PC games, had quite a few poorly made options, and it was basically a PC port, and that really was not so great. So I wanted to talk about the things that PC gamers might want on the PC, and I admit that I'm more like a casual PC gamer. I play PC games. It's mostly League of Legends. I'll play a little bit of Insurgency. I used to play COD 4 on the PC, and I actually tried to boot that up and get gameplay for this video. Unfortunately, the servers had been disabled, so that was very, very frustrating. I had Black Ops 2 on the PC, just didn't like it too much. But there are some essential things that PC players um, now, now, need is a word that I'm not necessarily going to use because you don't need a lot of things to play a game. Like, you can play a game, honestly. I could probably hook up my Guitar Hero guitar and play Call of Duty, just not well. There's some things that PC players very, very strongly want that are standard on all PC games and should be standard on all PC ports, and things that usually exist in older versions of these games or even in the like actual dev like command menu but are just kind of hidden away or locked that could just be made standard features. Number one is field of view options. You would be amazed at how many games come out, even Call of Duty games, that don't give you the option to adjust your field of view for whatever reason. I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know what caused it. Uh, PC, probably Quake, honestly, Quake more than anything. Uh, PC players like to have a really, really wide field of view. It kind of looks like a uh, reverse fisheye view. It looks like the, the sides of the gameplay warp around you. If you're not familiar with PC play, it looks a little bit weird, but they love it, they absolutely love it, and they hate Eight not being able to adjust their field of view options to something that they like more. There's a little bit of this on console. When you set your screen area on console, it changes the field of view very, very slightly in, in some games, not all games. But this hasn't been in a lot of PC games re recently, or I'm going to pick on Ghost. There's going to be a lot of Ghost bagging in this video because that was the most recent one. There was no field of view slider option in PC in, in COD Ghost on PC, and a third-party guy kind of made a little hack where you could load up and change your field of view at added an extra option. However, that was treated as a cheat and it was disabled, and this was really, really frustrating to PC players. It's really not a big deal, and I don't know why it couldn't be added into the game. Also, why should PC games have FPS caps? Advanced Warfare should not have an FPS cap. That's another thing that's special to the PC market. PC players play on really expensive machines. They take a lot of pride in their graphics cards and what their machine can and can't do. They love to test the limits. PC players, more than any other gamers, are more of hobbyists than anything, and they really like to get high frame rates, even in games where it doesn't make much difference. People like to play League of Legends in absurdly high frame rates. Counter-Strike people play in frame rates in just ungodly numbers. People like to brag about what their frame rate is. Most people prefer uh, to play, a lot of PC gamers if they can, a bare minimum of 60, but they really like 120, 200, uh, god, 240, crazy stuff like that. Black Ops 2 had some PC FPS caps, but they were pretty high. Call of Duty Ghosts had no official cap that I'm aware of, but I'm also not aware of anybody being able to get it much above 70 to 80 FPS, and that was really turning the graphics down to super minimum, doing really weird extreme things to your system. You just weren't able to increase the frame rate very much, and uh, specifically to Call of Duty games, I do know that changing the frame rate changes the way the game plays a little bit, 
but considering the sales numbers for Ghost on PC, and basically Call of Duty in any PC genre past maybe MW2 has been considered a joke game or a bad port or something like that, why not just give them the options so at least they'll enjoy it? Like, we don't... At least they can buy the game and enjoy it and don't have to fret about it. It's not like Call of Duty on PC is the most serious thing, which is unfortunate because it used to be. COD 4 was and still is an amazing PC game. Well, maybe definitely was now that the servers are pretty much gone. That's kind of depressing, but it was a really great game on PC. The PC players loved it. Another big one is the ability to host custom lobbies. Uh, Call of Duty is very big on matchmaking, and I totally understand that, and it's very easy to port over the console matchmaking experience. And to have it roll like that, you got your levels, your progression, you have your official servers and all that sort of stuff. But that's just not how PC rolls. PC gaming really doesn't roll by matchmaking. They don't really care about that as much. They really like custom lobbies. They really like crazy modded different sort of lobbies. And that's exactly how COD 4 worked. Uh, a lot of them were official, so I actually did get my level ups and ranks in those sort of lobbies. But I would kind of browse and it's like... Oh, this is a Scrapyard 24-7 server. Well, I'm just going to join that one and play it. And again, it's weird compared to console, but it's what they want. And this is one of those things, I keep saying this, what they want, what they want, what they want. And that's because I've talked to developers in the past, uh, both in the Call of Duty sphere and on Battlefield. It's all, I've talked to tons of different developers at PAX and E3 and Gamescom and stuff. And I'll ask about these kind of features, and they usually get uh, a question is like, why, why should we put this in our game? And I'll say, because they want it. And they'll be like, okay, well, why do they want it? And asking why they want it in this situation is the wrong question. The wrong question is, how can we give it to them? It's th They're your customers, they're your fans, they're the people whose needs and wants and goals and fantasies you're there to serve. It's not like you should have to justify to me why you want these things. It's more like I should justify you why I can't provide them. And, and that's more my outlook on it. And I really do hope that Advanced Warfare does have these basic PC settings because if it has these very basic essential PC settings it'll be the first big multi-platform launch in like a couple of years that has it all done right but at this point I'm gonna change over to uh, back to my list a few accessory features that are very often missing from PC ports mouse sensitivity options you'd be surprised how many games have very limited mouse sensitivity options you have to go turn it up in Windows instead of in the game audio balance options that's another pretty essential one for PC people have special headsets and mix amps even that's becoming essential for console I'll be pretty disappointed if Advanced Warfare doesn't have audio mix options anyway Black Ops 2 was a good example of that had a lot of master audio voice audio sound effects audio all overall a lot of different balances that was very good and useful button remapping there are occasionally PC games released that don't let you remap that's that's very rare you have to pick a couple of different presets that's again that's extremely rare but it has happened and a, but a big one is having I'm gonna say all of the graphical options shadows lighting water uh, my god anti-aliasing shaders uh, draw distance, or I guess render distance is the same thing. FPS cap also kind of goes into this one. A lot of times when they, when a developer will port over a primarily console game to PC, the options you will get are low, medium, high, and something like very high or extreme, or actually ultra. Ultra is a pretty common word these days. But they're all just presets, and the, the, the thing about PC gaming is you might have a graphics card that is amazing at lighting, but does water kind of sort of mediocre, and it's maybe a strain for whatever reason, the water physics on the car just isn't so great. So what you would do on a normal PC game, since the beginning of time forever, is I would set my lighting options to really high, and it wouldn't affect the system, and I'd set my water options to medium, and it wouldn't affect the system, and it would all be more or less good. I actually did this in Half-Life, that, that's kind of the example. My, for whatever reason, the car just didn't like the water in that game. Uh, but when you have these settings of just standard low, medium, high, and across the board, you're moving all setting, settings up low, medium, and high. So I could either choose to play with my high lighting setting on and have everything look pretty, or I could scale it back. And what, well, the downside is that if I looked at water, it, it might give me an FPS drop or make my system angry. But I, if I wanted a more stable experience, I would have to scale back on my lighting and trade that off and instead go with a lesser experience. That's kind of what you get here, and I don't know why you wouldn't just have the options to change everything, just like a standard PC game. And now toward the end of the video, now that I'm getting pretty dadgum rambly and I know it, it's pretty late at night and I'm frustrated three layers deep, mostly because I couldn't play Call of Duty 4, and also because for whatever reason in Black Ops 2, the only lobbies that I could get in were Nuketown. I feel like they should just retire Black Ops 2 and make it Nuketown 24 because every single public match is Nuketown, or maybe I should just do League Play, I don't know, but 
I'm going to add a little special session at the end of this video called Make Fun of Ghosts, Talk Bad About Ghosts, because that's kind of easy points to do. But the PC version of this game was a complete mess. It's something I've talked about before, but when the game launched, the requirements to play... Now, I didn't, now I'm going to say this uh, to clarify. I did not purchase the PC version of this game. I had friends of mine that did, and I read internet forums, which are obviously the most reliable things in the world. Not really, but uh, the... Graphical settings or minimum specifications were very, very high to play Call of Duty Ghosts on PC. Suspiciously high. People that downloaded the game illegally, that pirated it, were able to play the game on much lower settings than people that bought it normally, and especially with the RAM. It required 6 gigabytes of RAM to play. Pirates that got the game could run it just fine on like 4 or 3, sometimes like 2 gigabytes of RAM. Not really great, but they could run the game, and it was more or less okay. Uh, however, if you legally bought the game and you had less than 6 gigabytes of RAM, you were just like artificially blocked from playing it. Just so they put this sort of lock on the system. And on top of that, it just... It, it was crazy because it was just done to make the game look better. Like it was a marketing decision done to just make it look better for no reason whatsoever other than to... It's like, oh, we're competing with Battlefield. We should have higher specs than Battlefield. And it really pissed off a lot of PC people. And the requirements were absurdly high, too. You had pretty poor optimization in general, unstable frame rates, and the textures compared to the file sizes were kind of absurd. But I know I'm getting near toward the end of the video now. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. And if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.